you've come with some challenges. What kind of challenges are you, do you have that are specific to maybe Washington State? Well, for the state and for all the states that have legalized mm -hmm. adult use or medical, what's the big gorilla in the room? This Defense. prohibits federal law, yeah. so there's oh, yeah, it's, and, and it's schedule one. it's a schedule one controlled substance. Yeah. It couldn't be any more uh, difficult with respect to that. So, what what has that created? Basically, you just al alluded to it, Daryl, which is banking. Mm -hmm. So, if all the banks are all national banks, if they're not international banks, we struggled from the very beginning because producers, processors, and retailers couldn't get bank accounts. For for example, I can't get a loan. So typically when you're going to start a business, either you have your own capital or you go to a bank and you get a loan to create your business. That couldn't happen here. Yeah. National banks would not provide lending. They still won't provide lending. Yeah, We do get some regional opportunities. Well, one, one, one of the nice things that yes. happened in working with Denny Heck, who's the congressman yeah. from this area. Yeah, uh, and he's Mr. Cannabis in Washington, D.C. Well, he is. And <laughs> so we... Um, we work with him and others in the congressional delegation yeah. and with DFI, who is the Department of Financial Institutions that does bank, regulates state yeah. banks here, um, and then work with the Department of Treasury. And there's a FinCEN guidelines that were set a couple of years after legalization to make it easier for banks in the state to provide banking. Because remember, if having a cash-only business is problematic, correct? <laughs> I mean, it's problematic to track it. As yeah. a regulator, it's problematic for the business. Who wants to be carrying around cash or right. paying, making payments in cash? So three, well, also, three there's state. There's a lot of security issues. About Absolutely. It, which it, yeah. which I don't think really, in my just uh, experience, haven't been really addressed because when I see people coming here with a bucket right. full of cash, well, who's protecting them? Well, let's talk <laughs> about that for a minute because yeah, what happened? Here, here's the here's the here's the good thing that's happened. Um, in the last few years, 97% of the excise tax that we collect, and you saw how big it was, yeah. is coming to us in a form other than cash. That was not how it was in the beginning. Because we, have, we have three state credit unions and, three, and four state banks that are providing banking for the retail okay. licensees. And so that means... Now, they're not, they're not marketing themselves as that, uh, are they? I mean, because they're not... Uh, when I've talked to some of those people, right. they're like, we're not going to talk about that, but yeah. we'll do it. So, well, but, but you guys can help people to direct them to those if they we do. We do. Yeah. Well, okay. in fact, if they're trying to pay their excise tax here, we need a letter from one of the credit unions or the state banks denying them access to an account. Because a lot of times okay. what was happening up front yeah. is that people were coming here to pay their taxes. Do you know why? They don't want to pay the bank fees. Yeah. Those bank fees are yeah. pretty steep. Yeah. They, they can be. Steep. So, steep. so we did something there to say, look, we need a letter that you've been actually denied. We want you to go and use a bank and, and have that information uh, and have that, that banking experience there just like everybody else. But I think um, in, in, in Oregon, for example, their excess yeah. tax, about 50%, is being paid in cash. They're struggling with some of these issues right now and in Colorado, too. So I think remember that that federal prohibition creates all kinds of problems, not only banking, um, uh, but also we would typically go to the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, for advice on what are the pesticides that can be used or not used on cannabis, and what are those action levels. When it gets to a certain level in a test, yeah. then that product has to be destroyed because it goes beyond what's acceptable. Right. There's not a lot of science, there's not a lot of research around cannabis because of the prohibition. There's some research out there, but you know, even our own Department of Agriculture was reluctant to give us advice about that because there aren't, there's not a standard that's out there. So we went to the Department of uh, uh, Agriculture in Oregon, used their rules actually to determine yeah. what pesticides could be used well, or not used. But those are, that's just an example of some of the problems that we have with the federal prohibition. WSU UW would love to do a lot of research around cannabis. They're more reluctant to do that now yeah, because that they receive sense. federal funds. With the new administration coming in uh, a year ago, there was concern mm -hmm. there too about where are we headed. Comments made by the Attorney General about uh, cannabis and concerns that maybe so there might be enforcement action against the states.